This is going to be verse by verse of Daniel chapter 3, but I don't want to look at verse 15 to get the title. As you know the story, King Nebuchadnezzar sets up an image, he gets music involved in the worship and lets everyone know that at the sound of the music, they must bow down and worship the image. So verse 15, it says, Now if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack but psaltery and dulcimer and all kinds of music you fall down and worship the image which I have made well but if you worship not you shall be cast the, the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands so let's look at Daniel chapter 3 and see who is that God who will deliver them out of the hands of the king Number one, he is a God who set the stars in heaven. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 1 says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. So the height of the image is three score cubits, and a score in the Bible is twenty. So three score would be 20 plus 20 and plus 20, which is 60. And the breadth is six cubits. Notice the sixes associated with the image. If you look at the chapter, you'll notice it says he set up or set it up. Talking about setting up the image, it says he set up or set it up six times. And Nebuchadnezzar is a type of the Antichrist in this chapter. He demands worship just like the Antichrist would demand worship. And notice that this image that Nebuchadnezzar has here is an image of himself. And it has to be set up. He set it up in the plain of Dura. And right off the bat you see how this false god is inferior to Almighty God. Uh, you can't pick God up. You can't move God. He isn't like Dagon who falls on his face and he has to be set up again like in 1 Samuel chapter 5. Uh, who is the God who will deliver Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? It is the God who set the stars in the sky. A God who set the stars in heaven. Genesis 1, 16 through 17 says, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. When you blaspheme God, you blaspheme a God powerful enough to create the stars and then place them where he wants them. And when you talk to God, you're talking to the same God who, who did just that. Uh, God is bigger than you. He is bigger than any false God or image made by the work of men's hands. Verse 2 it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent together together the princes, the governors, and the captains, and the judges, and the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So all the big shots come to worship this image that the king has set up. And although Exodus 20 and verse 4 says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, these are a bunch of educated and wealthy people. But education without salvation, as they say, is damnation. And you see a lot of these rich, fancy, educated people. But all of that stuff will burn in hell if they don't get saved. Don't envy sinners. If you're saved, then you're rich. If they're not saved, then they're poor. Proverbs twenty three seventeen says, Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. The church in Smyrna in the book of Revelation is said to be in tribulation and poverty. But God says to them, Thou art rich. Because if you're saved, then you're rich. On the other hand, the church of Laodicea thinks they're rich, but God says they are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. God sees on the inside. For man looketh on the outward appearance but the Lord looketh on the heart. So all them guys going to worship the image don't have a lick of sense. They may be educated and wealthy, 
but they don't have any sense when it comes to God and the things of God. Just like most wealthy, rich, educated, fancy people today have no sense when it comes to God. Verse 3. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, and judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together into the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. You know what this is? They are gathered together. This is an ecumenical movement. And it is bad to get everyone together if they're getting together against God. That is what they are doing today. In the time of Jacob's trouble, they will get together against God under a new world order, a one world religion. This is also what God wants. God wants this too. Because Jesus Christ can level all the enemies at once if they're gathered together in one place. If you look at Zechariah 14.2, it says, For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. So these people who are going against God, no matter how many numbers are behind them, can't compare to a God that made the stars and the heavens and placed them where he wanted them to be effortlessly. So verse 4, Then an herald, which is a proclaimer, and the devil has his proclaimers, then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages. So the devil doesn't discriminate. He wants everybody. He wants everyone against God, the good, the bad, the ugly, the poor, the rich, the nobodies, the famous people. He wants everybody. He wants everybody to go against God. Verse 5, That at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. So notice six instruments. Six is associated with the image. And notice music is involved in the worship. When you go to these concerts and even these contemporary Christian concerts, who does it seem is getting the worship? The people on stage. Uh, the filthy mouth rapper Little Wayne was on stage and he said, I believe in God, do you? And then he said, I'm not blank without you, so make noise for what you have created. He is saying their worship and their making noise towards him has made him a god. And he is a false god. He gets worshipped through music and the devil gets worshipped through him. He is a false god. He gets worshipped through music and the devil gets worshipped through him. There is a bad kind of music, as you see here, but there's, there's also a good kind of music in the Bible. 1 Samuel 16, 23 says, And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. So there's a kind of music that draws unclean spirits towards you, and a kind of music that gets unclean spirits away from you. And the God who made the worlds is the God who desires you to use music when you worship Him. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So God's purpose for music is for you to worship Him with the music. And now verse 6 of Daniel chapter 3, it says, And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Who else in the Bible told somebody to fall down and worship me? The devil. The devil did when Jesus was tempted by the devil. Here's what Satan said in Matthew 4, 9. It says, And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. The people who get put in power are the ones who sell out to the devil the most. Uh, verse 6, And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So who is that God who shall deliver Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? He is a God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. 
Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And Nebuchadnezzar could get anybody killed anytime he wanted to, but he can do nothing compared to what God can do. And Nebuchadnezzar could put the three Hebrew boys in fire and burn their body, but he couldn't take their soul. God can kill you physically and then let your soul burn for eternity. Uh, if you fear anybody at all, fear God. Proverbs twenty nine twenty five says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso put it, putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. All those guys who fear man are bringing a snare on their life. But if you put your trust in the Lord, the one with all power, then you'll be safe. And that sums up the chapter. The three Hebrew boys had their trust in the Lord, and they came out safe. Verse 7 of Daniel chapter 3. Therefore at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, but psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. The Chaldeans, those smart guys, the know-it-alls, who have education without salvation, they accused the Jews just like the devil. Revelation 12.10 calls him the accuser of the brethren. And here his, the ch children of the devil are accusing people just like he does. Uh, Daniel 9 or Daniel 3 and verse 9 says, They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Notice that phrase. They have not regarded thee. And we don't regard these servants of, of wickedness either. Ephesians 4.27 says, Neither give place to the devil. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew who they served and who they feared. They fear him who is able to cast both soul and body in hell, and that's God. The God who made the stars in the sky. Uh, Proverbs 19 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Proverbs 10.27 The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Uh, if it wasn't for the fear of the Lord, then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would have died way earlier. But they had the fear of the Lord and they didn't die that day. But somebody else died that day, as we're going to see, and that's because the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Uh, Proverbs 14.26 says, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children have a place of refuge. John 1.9 says, And he said unto them, I am... Jonah 1.9 says, And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. So, Jonah says that he feared the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they feared the Lord. So if you're going to be wise, you're going to be a man of God, a woman of God, you need to fear God. Verse 13 says that Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. So whose fury would you rather face? Someone like Nebuchadnezzar? Are the fury of Jesus Christ at the second coming. Isaiah 63, 6 says, And I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. Would you rather have Jesus Christ who made the worlds have his fury on you, have his wrath on you, or have Nebuchadnezzar's wrath on you? So verse 14, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
Do ye not serve my gods nor worship the golden image which I have set up? So at least he's giving them the benefit of the doubt here. Maybe it is because he believes he's so powerful and intimidating that no one would go against him. He has complete confidence in his intimidation and his power on people. And that shows how bold and fearless the three boys are. It's because they have God on their side. But now we see next who is that God who, was, who will save Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It is a God who delivers his people. If you look at verse 15 and 16 in Daniel chapter 3, it says, Now if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. And the word careful here means full of care. They weren't full of care about answering what he just said. They saw no need to pray about the situation. They knew they weren't supposed to worship a graven image. And you don't have to pray about something if God has already gave you an answer for it in his book. I don't have to pray about should I worship false gods because God's already told us not to worship a false god. If the question comes up, should you fornicate with your boyfriend or girlfriend, you don't have to pray about it about an answer you know the answer uh, it's already in the bible that you shouldn't uh, you just need to pray that you won't be tempted so daniel 3 verse 17 it says and if it be so our god whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand O king so they're confident that god's going to, del to deliver them because God delivers his people. He delivered Israel out of Pharaoh's hand. He delivered Jonah from the belly of the whale. He delivered you if you're saved. Second Corinthians 1.10 says, Who hath delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, and whom we trust, that he will yet deliver us. Colossians 1.13, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. 1 Thessalonians 1.10, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. So God delivers his people. Daniel 3.17, And if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image, which thou hast set up. It's like Job said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Even if God doesn't work things out in the way you want him to, you got to serve him anyway. And that is the attitude to have. That is the attitude God is looking for. Have confidence that God is going to help you. But if he doesn't, you need to realize you don't de deserve deliverance anyway. You need to realize that God isn't obligated to help you. You were created for his pleasure, and he doesn't owe you anything. Jesus Christ dying as your payment for sin is something that you could never match, and you'll never be able to do enough to make God owe you anything. Now verse 19. This was Neb then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. So he is going to heat the furnace seven times more than it was wont to be heated, meaning seven times more than it is usually heated. And verse 20, And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Notice he sent his most mighty men. And these three boys must have been pretty stout for him to have to have to do that. Uh, that reminds me of how the devil has mighty men who can bind the Christian today. His most mighty men are the ones on the front of magazines, the ones in leadership. It's sad how Christians today let the devil creep in their houses through the devil's mighty men. God has his evangelists and witnesses going out. The devil has his evangelists and witnesses going out. 
In verse 21, it says, Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, which is their like their pants and their hats and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. But next, we're going to see who is that God who is going to deliver the three boys. He is a long-suffering God. Verse 22, Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Notice that this is urgent. The king wanted them dead immediately. Did you know that if it, if it was up to the devil, he would just go ahead and kill every one of you. He would have killed Job, but God told him not to. The devil wants you dead. He wants to sift you as wheat. He is a roaring lion walking about singing whom he made a vower. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And it's the hand of God keeping you safe. But God isn't so quick just to just kill you. You have offended him a thousand times and he hasn't killed you yet because he is long-suffering. Exodus 34, 6 calls him merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth. God wants you to get saved. He wants you to live right after you're saved. And he'll do things to try and compel you to get right. He won't force you to do anything, but he'll do things to push you towards righteousness. He is long-suffering, gracious, and merciful with you. Aren't you glad you serve a God like the God you have? Uh, God is long-suffering toward us. We're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Unlike wicked King Nebuchadnezzar, who won't put up with anything, he'll just go ahead and kill someone. Now, verse 22, it says, Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So Nebuchadnezzar's mighty men weren't so mighty and got consumed by the fire. Yet the one going against Nebuchadnezzar, they didn't get hurt. Sometimes it pays to serve the devil, but it pays a lot better to serve God. And the, the ways of a transgressor is hard. If you keep serving the devil, you're going to wake up one day with nothing. And those mighty men thought they were serving the right guy, so they forced others to serve Nebuchadnezzar and deceived other people for him. But that reminds me today of how Satan's minions are. Because Second Timothy 3.13 says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And while people like Jay-Z and Eminem and Drake and Ariana Belgrande and all these satanic singers and rappers are deceiving the kids, the devil is deceiving his satanic henchmen at the same time. And while they're deceiving people, the devil is deceiving them. They think they're doing pretty good, but they have a strong delusion. But Daniel 3.23 says, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, like astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He had answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Notice that they were loose. And I heard a great preacher, I think it was Denny Castle, say the only thing that burned on them was what the world put on them. The ropes that was used to hold them down is the only thing that burned. But they had no hurt because a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ showed up in the fiery furnace with them. So who is that God that shall deliver Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? He is a God who is there in your fiery trial. First Peter 4.12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. You already know this, but as a Christian, you are going to have fiery trials, and it will be God who gets you through the fiery trials. Verse 26, Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire. That's just like the devil. The devil gets you down, has his foot on your neck. He may say, 
are you still going to go on with your life after all that's happened to you? But then you come forth out of the midst of the fire. And Proverbs twenty four sixteen says, For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So, you can keep getting back up. If you keep failing over and over again, getting knocked down by the same sin, just keep getting back up. Keep confessing it. Keep getting right and trying to do better. And now verse 27. It says, And the princes, princes, governors, captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their heads singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. And this is a sign if you ever saw one. If you reject the true God after seeing this, then I wouldn't know how to convince you. It's like when in the book of Revelation, the people will see the bodies of the two witnesses get up after the Antichrist kills them. And even today, you can look and see there is a God in the creation. Think about adding signs like what these men saw in Daniel chapter 3 on top of that. There shouldn't be anyone denying that there is a God in heaven and that the God of the three Hebrew boys is the real God. The smell of fire didn't even pass on them. Uh, you can't go into the smoking section somewhere and not come out smelling like you just smoked a pack. But the Bible says in Revelation, the smoke of the torment ascended up forever and ever. Referring to the people who took the mark and are going to hell. The smoke of hell will never touch a born again believer, just like the smell of fire was never on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their hair wasn't singed, and God says the hair of your head are all numbered. He knows if, he would have known if they lost any, but he lets us know they didn't lose any. They didn't lose one of their hairs in the fire. Uh, verse 28 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. So Nebuchadnezzar has a complete change of heart after seeing what he just saw. And how could you not? This is a time when God worked by sight. Now he works by faith in this present time we are in. And that is one of the reasons you don't see uh, these kings, these kinds of things as much is because we live in a time where it's working by faith and not by sight. In the Old Testament, uh, they saw some things. Uh, they say that they, for for up until the flood, they could see the cherubim next to guarding the way of the tree of life. I mean, if you can see a cherubim there and say God isn't real, I mean, you're crazy. So there's signs. And then even in the book of Acts, when it going through that transition, they had the tongues speaking and all that stuff. So, and now we're living in a time where it operates by faith and not so much by sight. We have where we can see God in the creation for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they're without excuse. There's no excuse for us not to believe. But we're living in a time where it's mostly by faith and not by sight. But after the rapture and we leave out of here, it's going back to a time where it's going to go by sight more than by faith. And if a Christian doesn't yield himself to the Holy Spirit inside of him, then he's not going to live right. He will live for the flesh. But as you see in verse 28, it says they yielded their bodies. It says they yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. So who is that God that delivered them? A God worth serving. A God worth yielding yourself to. You don't want to yield yourself to the flesh and use your body as instruments to unrighteousness. The three boys could have live, lived for this present evil world. And yielded to it, yet they chose God. Romans six thirteen says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. 
Romans 6, 16 says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or, or of obedience unto righteousness. Verse 29 says, Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. So if Bill Maher, Seth MacFarren, Marilyn Manson, Tyler the Creator, or any other God-hating child of the devil live there, they wouldn't have lasted too long. Nebuchadnezzar said anyone who speaks against any, spoke anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they would be cut in pieces and their house was made a dunghill. And then verse 30, Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. We know it pays to serve God in eternity, but it will even pay to serve God on this earth sometimes. Sometimes God will work it out for you, for your good down here in the, with the lost world. Because sometimes at work, you have lost supervisors. Those lost supervisors see that you you work harder than all the lost people that are lazy and they come in there and don't do anything. But you're, you're over there, you're working hard. You're working with your own hands, as the Bible says, and you get promoted. And the lost supervisors appreciate someone that works hard. And that's a similar thing that happened here. The king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He saw something in them different than all those other people who did what he said and worshiped the false image. But this has been Daniel chapter 3.